so about orenda so orenda is an old english word which uh, you know basically means that there is this mystical magical force vested in us humans to do good so this uh, book is a collection of 52 flash fiction stories based in modern india what is flash fiction flash fiction is uh, a very technical terminology in literature where um, you know uh, the stories range from uh, 400 to 1000 words so micro fiction is around 200 100 to 200 uh, and then there is flash fiction and then there is short stories short stories would be from 1000 to 2000 3000 and more so that's the demarcation these stories have been written over a period of 8 to 9 years um i and i have reworked upon them and edited them so uh, the most challenging part of this book was not the writing it was self publishing because uh, during the pandemic i realized that i need to do something for myself where in in uh, november 2019 after my october challenge uh, you know i had a lot of withdrawal symptoms if you write and paint for a month straight you just you know get into that habit and after that i had withdrawal symptoms and i needed something to you know do because i live alone and i need to keep myself entertained right <laughs> so i i thought of you know uh, putting this book together dad was also pushing me but corporate life always you know puts all of these things on a back seat and i was also working for 16 hours a day in my previous organization that's when i realized ki i should do something for myself and um it it took me exactly 2 years to release the book uh not because of the editing and writing process but i to uh, i mean i i chose the road less taken i chose the self publishing route because i wanted to understand publishing it's a completely different ball game completely different universe and writing is the easy part now that i have been writing i can for, for 20 years i can say that writing is the easy part publishing is difficult selling is even more difficult and given that i am a marketer i didn't want to outsource anything i have reached and i was very adamant on a couple of aspects that i wouldn't publish a book without a foreword from a celebrity and i don't have any contact so i had to you know work harder um, and my professional credentials have helped me like the ted talk any award and all of these things help me a lot um, in in reaching out to people because that adds credibility to our overall profile right and um, through twitter i could reach out to a lot of people and uh, it took me 3 and a half months to get a yes for someone to believe in my work and write a foreword because they are a brand in themselves why would they write a foreword for someone they don't even no. know you know these are these are the practical challenges and um, manish mundra manish mundra is a filmmaker director sorry an aspiring director he has recently directed a film also it, it's not released yet but uh, manish mundra uh, is from drishyam films and he has made independent movies he is known as the guardian angel of indian independent cinema so he agreed to write the foreword that was very sweet of him very kind of him and then um, namita gokhale the director of jaipur lit fest and an eminent author herself she recently received sahitya academy puraskar uh for her novel and uh, she has endorsed the book so as a first time writer this was a very big thing in itself because i was doing everything myself from reaching out to these folks to checking the paper quality the extent or the you know the range of things which uh happened while publishing this book have i mean the list is humongous i, I actually plan to you know Uh, plan a workshop on self publishing where i can actually teach people and guide people based on my experiences well that is how it has been and then i went on a book tour from starting from 5th uh, november to you know uh till <clears throat> third week of december so that was quite fun i i reached out to a lot of uh, lit fest and a couple of them had invited as well so i was also at bangalore lit fest and akpur lit fest and now i will be at jaipur lit fest so jaipur lit fest happens to be the makka madina or jerusalem and you know you can call it it's like a pilgrimage for authors that way so i'm i'm humbled a couple of beautiful experiences during the journey i became self aware and a very you know um i realized a lot of things about myself so that has been quite a lot two years were quite a lot living alone doing everything at home in a pandemic and with my full time job so at the risk of sounding like an interviewer because i'm doing so many of these youtube interviews now that uh giving as well as 
uh, being the interviewer and interviewee. So at the risk of sounding uh, like an interviewer, I can't resist asking what have been your biggest learnings in the last two years in your journey towards being an author. It, it's definitely going to help uh, the people listening into this. Even if they are not here today, we will be putting this on YouTube and I'm sure the listeners will benefit from your experience. Uh, that what were your biggest learnings that is about life and what is the advice you will give to budding or aspiring authors? Right. So uh, I will answer the first question. Uh, see, I realized that uh, I am. Uh, I'm. I also had dengue when you know I was uh, in the publishing yeah, yeah. process this yeah. August, last August, and I barely made it. I it was in the ICU. It was it was it was pretty challenging, and uh, I was transfused with platelets five times. My platelets had dropped to 15, 20k, which was very very critical. A lot of blood loss as well. And that was the time when I was, you know, facing issues with getting the forward, like he had agreed, but not sent it and all of that. So that time, um, during the whole uh, dengue episode, I realized that I have been fearless all along. And, you know, it just hit me that, no, I'll, I, I'll, you know, I'll sail through, I'll do it, or I'll overcome this. And that was the biggest learning. I also have realized that I have... Uh, become much more empathetic of course given the situation and uh, in terms of self-awareness uh, in terms of what I want what I don't want there were things which were existing it's just that a lot of introspection happened and I realized that it's very important to know what you don't want to do so that you know the half of the clutter is cleared already uh, and I could focus on <clears throat> doing what I wanted to do. Second, I realized that I was very consistent and I applied all my MBA knowledge into this book journey. I call it bookpreneurship because it was a lot about entrepreneurship for me. And I never, I was someone who would say that, you know, I might not even start up because it takes a lot of effort and I think I'm not wired for it. But during this journey, I realized I got the confidence that, uh, you know, this bookpreneurship journey was indeed very, um, uh, very eye opening for me from uh, an entrepreneurship perspective. And above all, uh, I think it also made me a better writer because during the editing process, uh, I could I could rethink and reevaluate on this, you know, endings and the context of the story so that's about the first answer uh, for aspiring authors uh, yes irrespective of your genre irrespective of um, you know your style of writing always start with free form so this is for everyone even if you have written something in the past even if you haven't free form free <clears throat> sorry free form writing is basically that you let your thoughts flow either you jot them down on a on a paper with a pen or you just type it out and uh, you know that gives you the expanse of or the perspectives which you want to cover you can delete them later you can you know pick and choose the best ones which you want but freeform writing is the best way to start and uh, not to judge yourself on what you have written because it also takes a long way to you know for things to shape up and uh, i realized it a lot later that uh, my style of writing was flash fiction. Earlier, I used to just write because I wanted to keep writing. And do not push yourself too hard to write that, you know, I have to write 200 words a day. A lot of people do that. That works for them. But uh, I'm telling from a pers personal perspective that write only when the ignition or the, the you know, spark is there. Don't, uh, don't be too hard on yourself that I have to complete 200 words or 500 words a day. Also, if you are into fiction and if you are into other genres, observation is something which has helped me a lot. I pick up on very small, small details uh, in our daily life. Let's say I am having a cup of green tea and I'm looking outside the window and I observe something. I just jot it down and then probably come back later, you minute, and if that idea is still that beautiful for me, then probably I'll jot a story around it or maybe write a poem around it. But just, you know, uh, you have to make it a habit that you write, but not just like a to-do list. You know, writing as an art should be free-flowing. 
it should give you pleasure it should make you happy and not add to your existing like there are, there is so much stress around us so it should be yeah it it should be something which calms you down and makes you happy and write for yourself and then you can write for the world right i think uh, some really very good advice i've made notes so that what i was doing when i was looking down i was not uh, looking at my phone <laughs> just fyi everybody yeah, I, can, <laughs> and i i really believe that everyone can write you know people yeah. counter this statement a lot but i really think that everyone can write because writing is not writing it is thinking and everyone thinks and you know everyone has their own stand their their own viewpoints and their own perspectives it's just that writing becomes more impactful when it is uh in a expressed in a beautiful manner is what we think right like expressed in a well versed manner but i think everyone can write and every so polishing a script, a, a script should be clear here not in the hand yeah yeah, yeah. it is always here and here it yes. is it is here and here right yeah. uh, so everyone can write i i really believe everyone can write polishing is something they can learn but writing uh, comes from the heart which is your og original <laughs> so right. that's that's my personal perspective really 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 good advice and i uh, especially liked uh, the part about you know letting your thoughts flow and uh, letting uh, observing everything around you and then writing about it because you never know where a story lies right so the story right. could be in the sunset it could be in the stars you see in the sky and uh, maybe could noting down a thought it could be on your uh, in your saucer also you never know yeah it could be in your uh, tea cup it could be in your uh, whatever early early morning jog or whatever right so we get into the uh, book reading now you will like oh. to read us a chapter from your book and tell us uh, more about it yes definitely so there are so 52 stories the logic behind it is that there are 52 weeks a year so okay. one story per week was my concept and so the fun thing is that my birthday is on 13th april which is also 13 into 4 which is 52 that i realized later oh wow. so so this is how the book looks i have uh, um, uh you know i have worked upon the design with a friend of mine and uh, so these That's elements the elements on the book are basically uh the single line drawings which sto- our stories also have internally so i have this uh, typical style of giving instagram captions borrowing words from different languages and i've continued with that so okay. all the words as titles um are borrowed from different languages uh but i mean i would just give you some examples jani dekha hobe is bengali uh miss pa is portuguese uh, charmol pe is again portuguese there is teen patak which is nepali and uh, gajra gajra is marathi and things like that so um, i will first read the blurb from the book so to give everyone context because i think someone recently joined uh, and uh, the context will help me uh, you know uh, move into the story so <clears throat> this is what i have personally written and this is a gallery of local indian markets gajras and peppermints it serves meth coat and adhesives on a dinner plate there are ear rings on soft boards and marlboros on the ca- college canteen floor it has ghungroos on a christmas wreath and embroidery hoops stuck in rusty buses it echoes the walls of a boho apartment and art classes in kaleidoscopic brothels This is a gallery of the supernatural, divine, extraordinary, and inherent, the power within us and all living beings of delivery executive Manju, architect Gargi, Professor Miller, vagabond Bilwa, security guard Amar Chacha, and Amti. This is Orenda. This is us. So that's the blurb. And I could read the first story, which is my favorite. It is about my grandparents. some of these are inspired some of them are completely fictional and some of them are a mix of fiction right. and non so you read your favorite because obviously you're the author you will know which one is the best yes uh, so this is about my grandparents and it's called farmaish so uh, for those who don't know farmaish is a request or demand in hindi and all india radio has a program called aapki farmaish where people used to share dedications and song requests 
we lived with my grandparents till i was 4 in the heart of india's oran city nagpur my dadu was a retired marathi literature enthusiast and dadi was really looking forward to spending quality time with him he had a transferable job and he chose to hop cities alone they built a house anand happiness raised three boys and gave birth to resplendent memories dad used to manage the house and errands all by herself bank visits family weddings groceries homework and much more one women army is ran in my family ha huh? with a thousand responsibilities on her shoulders sathi hath badhana hey partner lend me a hand became a favorite song since 1957 It is from the movie Naya Dor, featuring Dilip Kumar and Vijayanti Mala. Dadu's love and support was expressed mostly through timely demand drafts, yearly saris, and home cooked thali pits. It's a Maharashtrian dish. After his retirement, they sat next to each other in two green wooden chairs, reading newspapers, doing crosswords, and listening to All India Radio all day long. Dadu had written a farmaish to the center to play her favorite song. She giggled, held his hand, and her eyes blushed like cherry dimples when she heard her name on air. It's been eight years since she left us. Today, Dadu sits alone with a newspaper stack next to him. Has bought a brand new handy recorder with a USB port. I haven't taught him how to play songs on repeat yet but whenever the device hums sathi hath badhana he holds his heart first and her chair's arm rest next sweet very sweet thank you the emotions are perfectly expressed thank you That's and this is how but there are no words there are no words he uses just the actions right just yes. the actions this and maybe the armrest lovely beautiful and old world kind of charm and romance in your, <laughs> yeah. yeah in your which you have captured being so young i think i mean i'm uh, i hate to bring up the age issue but <laughs> despite <laughs> being young you have managed to capture we always feel since i'm from another generation we always feel that the younger generation of today does not understand old world romance where we used to write love letters yeah even i have done that i don't mind saying it on uh, on air uh that uh, i have also done that and i have penned love letters so at yeah. that time there was no phone mobile nothing yeah. there was telephone yeah. landline but there was um, no mobile phone great that sounded great would you like to read uh, us uh, ask to listen to any anything else you would like to read us yes i have written about very different topics starting from like this one and then you know a lot of socially transformative stories as well i will pick one now uh, which is a little different uh one second so before you start i think there are so many people wanting to say uh something about your uh, sure. beautiful sure. reading so Thank archana you. go ahead you are saying something in the chat you can tell her directly it was like a movie song the contest was what she read at the first the whole yeah. team about the whole team it was like a movie song it was very beautiful i said <laughs> Thank you, Arjuna. Thank you so much. It's so kind of you. Sri Lakshmi says you can feel it. You can feel the to the next one, which you would like us to listen to. Sure. So the next one is "Jani Dekha Hobe." "Jani Dekha Hobe" is a Bengali phrase meaning "We'll meet one day." This expression is generally used when one builds up a friendship with a stranger. Farooq's family immigrated from Bangladesh in search of work prospects. A few years later, his parents and an elder brother got killed in a road accident. That's when Mr. Roy offered him a job while he was studying at New Anglo Night School near Mahatma Gandhi Road in Calcutta. This retired 62-year-old musician was living in living a solitary life with his rum-stained piano. He used to teach a few colony kids. mostly piano basics music was his armor his solution to everything his wife passed away during her pregnancy and he never remarried some mistresses visited once in a while but he had no family not that farooq knew of dada i am going to the bazaar let me know if you need any alcohol 
the caretaker always asked. He wanted to try it since day one, but Dada was stern about his no alcohol policy. I know you, Farooq, but when you turn 21 or maybe 31, we'll have our first sip together. We'll get you the finest rum in the world. He would shrug and scoff. Roy Dada aided his education, made, made him a better person. He learned a few music notes too, passively during his piano lessons. He was applying for jobs in Dada. Well, he kept saying, Farooq, it's time for you to go. Expand your wings and fly high. Celebrate. Farooq got a job as a junior master at Asansol Junction, five odd hours away from Calcutta. He had to leave. Take care and flood our son. Dada hugged him. The day Farooq got his first paycheck, he hopped on the first train to Calcutta. But Alice, Dada had bred his last. Approximately four hours in advance. He cursed the universe. He cursed it really bad. At least you could perform his last rites, the neighbors consoled. At the Shamshan Ghat, the priest was about to light the fire. Farooq couldn't hold back. He got down on his knees, secretly pulled out a bottle of Mr. Roy's favorite rum and sprinkled it on the log. I always wanted to have my first drink with you. Jani dekha ho, be dada, jani dekha ho. Thank you. Very nice. Your ending react on screen too. Sorry? Yeah, we need to react on screen. Yeah, in, <laughs> I okay. said uh, your endings are always perfect. Yeah, though, I think that, you are that's using right. two words. Yeah, that's that's you are uh, using few words, right. but you are yeah. able to convey. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, it is like we are seeing the full movie <laughs> in just few seconds. So that's flash fiction yes. for you, right? App, it is. Yeah, I think I lovely I, I in a the, flash uh, we've understood <laughs> what yeah. you're trying to say. <laughs> I think I read the heavy stories in the. I, I mean, but it's okay. Like, but you get my style. Like, this is how I write. How I, so it's it's fine. Yeah, Thank yeah you. both were beautiful and both conveyed uh, the loss which the person left behind is feeling very, very poignantly. Right. Not in words, but in actions. Yes. Lovely. Nice. So anybody has any questions? I know everybody is like uh, on mute, uh, but listening because I can see their comments in the chat box. Uh, so yes. anybody has any questions? Sharon, Mary, Lavita, uh, Archana, are you? Because I can keep on asking questions, but I don't uh, want to start asking. So Sharon has a question, I think. No, no, I don't have a question. I just have a line of... Would you like to say something? Yes. So Shalaka, beautiful reading. And, and I think these small narrations make the largest impacts uh, than reading a lot of pages. So really enjoyed reading and uh, can't wait to get my hands on your book. So um, I think it's it's a great yeah, commendable job and also having to self-publish is no easy task. So and plus you, uh, you've, you've been doing a book tour as a self-published author. So uh, that's very, very commendable and definitely an inspiration. So Shalaga, great work and uh, let it not, let your writing not stop with just one book right now. I mean, you would have published otherwise, but let more books um uh, you know be written for the future as well yes i'm actually working on the second already so okay see yes. you wish and it comes true so glad to know that <laughs> yes uh, uh, well, think, uh, yeah, tell me please no i was saying that i do have a couple of copies if anyone wants a signed copy uh i mean uh, i would be happy to take orders and you can gp on my personal number which i can share if anyone is interested i can why share don't you, after after this conversation why don't you just put uh, the method the book and everything on the group and that would be accessible uh, yes yeah. where can we find your book amazon kindle it's everywhere i will just read some of everywhere globally the beautiful comments from the chat box uh, uh, Available globally. Mary Devraj says it's a wonderful reading, and uh, uh, I think I read the earlier comment where Sri Lakshmi had said that you can actually feel the emotion. Great. Thank you. 